In this lesson, we're going to talk about Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about what causes Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, what are some of the signs and symptoms of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, how we diagnose it, what we can use to treat it, and we're also going to talk about why it can be potentially fatal if not treated promptly. So Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is caused by an infection with the intracellular gram-negative bacteria known as Rickettsia rickettsii. Here is an image of those gram-negative bacteria located within a cell. The reservoir hosts for this bacteria are generally dogs and rodents. And the vectors for transmission of this bacteria are ticks of the genus Dermacenter. There are a couple of important ticks to identify that are largely responsible for a lot of the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever located in the United States. One is Dermacenter variabilis, which is the American dog tick. And then there's also Dermacenter andersoni, which is the Rocky Mountain wood tick. And there are other tick species located in other geographical areas. Now, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and its causative bacteria Rickettsia rickettsii are located within the Western Hemisphere, generally in the United States, Canada, Mexico, Central and South America, and in South America it's more some of the northern areas such as Colombia. We generally see Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever incidences peak in spring and summer months when this tick becomes more active. And Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is again a potentially fatal condition if not treated promptly. We'll talk about more why that is a little later on. The incubation period for this bacteria is generally 2 to 14 days before we begin to see symptoms. The clinical presentation of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is dependent on the pathophysiology of Rickettsia rickettsii. Rickettsia rickettsii actually invades endothelial cells of small blood vessels in an individual, leading to inflammation and injury of those endothelial cells. This leads to small hemorrhages and thrombi, which also lead to widespread vasculitis. Here's an image of Rickettsia rickettsii within endothelial cells, these little red dots here. The classic symptoms of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever are a similar prodrome to influenza. The first classic symptom is a fever, the second is a headache, and the third is a rash. So the classic symptoms are actually in the name Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, spotted for rash, and the fever. And if you see fever, headache, and rash in a person with a history of a tick bite, think Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. First, a person may also have myalgia, malaise, nausea, and vomiting. And the rash is erythematous and macular. And it generally occurs at three to five days in infection. So the rash itself is not a good characteristic symptom to identify Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever early. Generally, individuals only get it by three to five days of infection. And some individuals don't get this rash at all. So we can't, we can't bank our diagnosis on the rash itself. But if we do have a rash, the rash is blanching. So if we push on the rash, we can actually blanch it. And the rash starts on the extremities, generally the ankles and the wrists. And it will proceed centrally. So it'll start from ankles, wrists, or palms, or soles, and it spreads toward the trunk. So it spreads toward the arms, the legs, and the chest. And this rash becomes more petechial over time. And as I mentioned before, 10% of individuals don't have the rash at all. So we, again, can't determine our diagnosis solely on the rash. But if you do see a rash with a fever and headache, think Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. There are also CNS and other severe signs and symptoms, and this is what really can cause 
Rock Mountain Spotted Fever to be lethal. Some of these symptoms can include confusion, focal neurologic signs, meningitis, so if an individual has meningismus or a stiff neck, you can think meningitis. It can cause encephalitis, can cause ARDS or adult respiratory distress syndrome, it can cause a non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, arrhythmias, and GI bleeds. So again, this can be very severe if left untreated. So how do we make the diagnosis of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever? The diagnosis is generally a clinical one. And I say that because we don't see serologic evidence of it until a little later. So we may see IgM antibodies form to rickettsia rickettsii, but we want to catch this even earlier. So if we get a good history, we see that the individual may have been exposed to ticks and they have these types of fevers, they have a fever, headache, and if they have a rash, got to think Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. If they don't have the rash, then we have to come up with our clinical judgment and also have this as a potential diagnosis. Serology can be used, again, as something that can occur later. Generally, it is something we treat empirically before we get ser serological evidence back. We can also do a skin biopsy. So if we see some of these uh, macular rashes, we could actually take a punch biopsy of the rash. And this may actually help us determine the diagnosis even earlier if that rash is present. And treatment of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is specific and important to remember. First, we should try to start therapy within five days of onset of symptoms. And the treatment is doxycycline. So the tetracycline, doxycycline, and we treat for five to seven days. This is very important. For Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, we want to use doxycycline. And defervescence, or the abatement of a fever, will generally occur within three days of treatment. So what's the prognosis? Generally, if left untreated, mortality can be as high as 20 to 30 percent, so can be a very lethal infection. Worse outcomes for prognosis can be determined by several different factors. One is extremes of age. So individuals, so children under the age of four or five generally have worse outcomes. Adults greater than the age of 60 generally have worse outcomes. Also male gender offers a generally worse outcome. Black race, so an individual who's black may also have a worse outcome with this infection. Having chronic Ethanol abuse will also lead to a worsening of prognosis and certain con genetic conditions such as glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency can also lead to worsening outcomes of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. So anyways guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. This was a lesson on Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. If you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.